Hello again, welcome back to the shack. We're gonna look at something a little bit different today. As you can see from the tape on this box, this is a package from Mass Drop, which if you're not familiar with it, is a community, it's a business, where you can buy items uh, along with a group of other people where you commit to make a large order and possibly get items uh, that are unusual or are cheaper than they might have other otherwise been. Um, I'm not going to advertise for Mass Drop here. I've had an okay experience with them, but that's not what this video is about. What it's about is what's in this box. And let's open it up and take a look. All right, as you may be able to see from the logo on the box here, this is an OLKB keyboard. Uh, and OLKB, the OL stands for ortholinear. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But I have ordered a keyboard kit. There's a lot of glare there, isn't there? I've ordered a keyboard kit um, and am going to put together a keyboard. Now, uh, the reason this is a kit, as many unusual keyboards are, um, is that uh, it avoids uh, FCC. Um, uh, type acceptance. So this keyboard doesn't necessarily have to go through uh, the FCC certification process, which means that small runs of unique items can be produced without uh, the overhead and the expense of, of having to have them uh, accepted. So um, there's a few things in this box. One is the keyboard itself. Two is a bag of cherry brown switches. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, here in a minute, but they're just the uh, the keyboard key switches that you would push. And then the last thing is a bag that the completed keyboard uh, will slide into because I what I plan to do with this keyboard is uh, carry it in my um, bag with my uh, with my laptop. As you can see by the size of this bag and by the size of the box which contains the keyboard parts, this is a rather small keyboard. Now, this isn't the first sort of uh, boutique keyboard uh, that I've purchased. This is an Ergodox Infinity which is my daily keyboard that I use day to day. And I've been using it for about um, a year and a half now. And um, this keyboard, as you'll notice, the keys are in straight rows vertically and horizontally here. Uh, well, I guess the horizontal has a little bit of contour, but the uh, vertical is certainly uh, straight rows. And this is what is called ortholinear. Um, and if you contrast this with a normal keyboard like you probably have on your computer, you'll find that the, the keys on the ortholinear or on the on the standard keyboard are, are at angles. Um, and supposedly this is better ergonomically for your fingers to type on an ortholinear keyboard like this. I don't know if it is or not. Um, I do know that I like the Ergodox uh, layout and the Ergodox Infinity specifically very much and that it is ortholinear. Um, and when I was looking for a, uh, a keyboard to carry around with me, I said, well, let me try an ortholinear. And I found this OLKB prionic keyboard uh, on Mastrop, and I selected it to be my sort of uh, trial uh, portable keyboard. So let this, let's open this up and uh, see what the kit looks like. Uh, okay, so they've given us a, uh, a layout uh, or a key map. Boy, there is a lot of glare here, isn't there? A key map uh, of the keyboard and what it looks like with its default layout. Um, this won't be very important to me because I am almost certainly going to change the layout. I, I already know that, uh, but I guess this is what it would look like uh, if you didn't. And and the reason it's important to have this, if I can get it in here where there's where there's a minimum amount of glare, uh, is because because it is an unusual layout. You know, there are keys that that you need to know where they are. So, for example, the three key here is labeled F4 down here in the corner, um, and you have to press a function key, um, raise or lower, I guess lower here, uh, to get that F4 out of that uh, three key. So uh, if you were, weren't going to rebind it, you would need to know how it was laid out. Here is the keyboard case itself, uh, this aluminum um, case. Um, I will be using this. I do like this case. I think it's going to be uh, very nice. Oh, I lied about the FCC thing. This one actually seems to have um, 
Part 15 approval. That is uh, surprising to me. Um, that's very surprising to me. But uh, I like this case. I, I think it's it's quite nice. Uh, it looked quite nice online. We'll see when we get it put together uh, what I think, but I do plan to use this. Uh, what else is in here? Um, USB cable, whatever. Uh, some hardware, again, whatever. We'll need it. Um, stabilizers. Now, I don't plan to put a large uh, space bar on here, but these stabilizers are used uh, for switches that are larger than a single switch in order to make them uh, actuate uh, without, without rocking on the switch that's underneath them. Um, I, again, don't plan to use these, but, uh, but there they are, I guess. Or maybe it looks like there's just one. Uh, some feet, again, whatever. Um, and then the key tops. Now, I will be putting these key tops on it. I think they're just blank. Yeah, they're just blank uh, key tops, and they are um, OEM profile or DCS profile, as as uh, Pimp My Keyboard uh, calls them. Well, uh, the Signature Plastics, I think, is the name of that company. Um, but they uh, they're the kind that kind of have the scooped layout uh, when you put them all together, like a traditional OEM computer keyboard. Um, these are blank; they don't have labels on them. I don't care much about that, as you can see from my um, Ergodox Infinity. I got uh, lettered keys for it, uh, and I'm perfectly happy with them. Some people are, are passionate one way or the other. Um, I am uh, indifferent, but I'll be using them certainly for now. And then here is the meat of this. This is what I can't get necessarily uh, from another keyboard project. This is the uh, support plate for the keys and the, each of those key switches that we saw earlier, um, wherever they went, these key switches will snap into this support plate. I guess the space bar's down here. Uh, will snap into this support plate and that's, this gives the keyboard its rigidity uh, and the nice feel when you, when you um, use it. And then this, of course, in the static bag, I guess it's not even a full static bag, um, is the keyboard PCB. Um, and this PCB is, uh, of course, the, the guts of the thing. Um, it has a, uh, looks like it's an Atmel Atmega 32U4. Um, processor that does the uh, the software for the keyboard and this keyboard runs a, a software package I believe QMK um, it, I'll look it up later and make sure I get that right but uh, it is an open source software package so you can put your own software on this keyboard modify it bind your keys etc I don't plan to modify the software myself um, but I will be rebinding keys and, and changing layouts um, and things like that and then uh, there's a little reset button there. Um, there are resistors and some uh, capacitors all over the keyboard, uh, as well as the diodes that form the uh, matrix so that the processor can tell which keys have been pressed. Um, and these, these resistors next to the little plus minus pads are for putting LEDs under the keys. Now, I don't plan to do that. I am indifferent to keyboards that glow. I frankly will be using this as a laptop, with a laptop and I don't want to waste the battery life. So I probably will not be putting any LEDs on it. Um, some people get uh, pretty excited about that. You can see the complexity of the switch layouts on this board. This key, particular keyboard circuit board will accept a number of key switches. Um, I got the Cherry uh, MX brown keys. It will also accept several other brands of uh, keys that are, are more or less similar to the Cherries. I don't remember the full list, but I think Alps, Matthias, and then the various Cherry compatible uh, keys, Zilios and Gateron and, and those, um, as well as keys that either require mounting in this plate or keys that have feet that, that go through the board. Um, so that accounts for the complexity of the board here. Now, as you can see, this is a kit. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to have to do is uh, put the, uh, uh, the stack up together here with the keys and the, the support plate and the 
PC board and solder it all together um, so that we can take a look at this keyboard. So I'm going to do that. I'll get some footage of that and sort of show you uh, how that goes together, although I'll spend very little time on it because there are a lot of really good videos out there on building um, keyboard kits. This is a fairly popular and, and common thing to do. Uh, so this won't be a how-to tutorial, but I will show you sort of what I do. And then sort of the important thing here is uh, we'll take a look at it and see what I think about it. So stick with me here. We'll put this keyboard together and then we'll see uh, whether it's going to serve me well uh, in my bag or not. Here we are with a support plate with a single switch installed here in the top left corner. And it's important to figure out the orientation of the support plate and the PC board and such before you start putting switches in it uh, in order to make sure the switches are in right. And this PC board goes into the case uh, with the component side down with the jack here at the top left hand corner. And you can tell by that by examining the case that it goes in. And then the support plate goes onto the PC board like this. And again, you can tell that by looking at the PC board, see this wide uh, opening here at the bottom? That's for if you wanted to put a, a little space bar at the bottom. And in that case, you would put the switch in the center uh, of this space so there can't be a support here in the center of the space. So it, the stack up goes like this. And you need to know that because the back side of the switches are not symmetric. If you see here, there are two pins on the switch. Uh, and the center post there. And the center post has to go through one of the holes on the PC board with the pins then falling into these holes uh, above the center post. So in this board, we want the center pins uh, or the, the uh, contacts on the switch to be toward the top side of the board. And with these type of cherry switches, and these are the um, support mount switches. Note that they have this locating post but that they don't have any feet. Uh, you can see the, the little um, places there where the feet would be if they had them and then they would pass through these holes on the board and sort of hold the switch in place. It doesn't have those uh, and it also has a space at the bottom here for the LED. It's even got, uh, if it's visible, the little diode symbol there on the switch. And on this uh, type of switch, with this type of support, the switches go in from the top of the support, and they just sort of push down through the support and snap into place. And what you need to do to get this started is put a couple of these in here to support the plate above the circuit board, but not so many that it becomes a problem to get all the pins lined up and put through the circuit board. So I'll just put one in each corner on this board. Um, and I'll put them in in that same orientation with the pins toward the top of the support plate. Now, if you mess up and you get one of these in the wrong way, there are little feet on the, or little clips on the switches right there that you just depress with something small like a screwdriver and then pop the switches up. And see how that switch came up off the plate a little bit and then it can be pulled back out. But we're going to hopefully put them all in the right direction so that's not a problem. Just take the four switches, I'll put one, as I said, in each corner, uh, and then set it down on the PC board. And once it's set down on the PC board, uh, then we can flip the board over and, and do some soldering. Um, if you put too many of the switches in, and I got a little bit, um, I, I had read this, but I got a little bit eager with my Infinity Ergo Docs, then if any of these little pins are bent or whatever, then it can become a real problem to get them into the board. Okay, we've got our four switches in here, and uh, I've turned the board over, and all we're going to do is we're just going to take this PC board, and we're going to set it down on the four switches so that the pins fall through the holes. And it's going to be hard to see exactly what's happened here, but we have some pins come through this hole here. Let me get a pointing device. This hole here and this hole here. Uh, we have a pin through this hole here and this hole here, and likewise in each of these corners. Uh, I want to say already, I've spent some time looking at this board. I like this board a lot. Uh, it's very, it's quite stiff. Uh, it's nicely made. It's a thick board. It's got fine layers. Um, they've gold plated the contacts. This is a single time soldering board that I don't plan to have around for forever. So I'm, a, you know, not so concerned about the gold contacts. But a lot of people do get excited about that sort of thing with these sort of boutique um, keyboards. In my case, I just, I'm going to type on the thing. So I'm not super concerned about uh, whether it has gold contacts or not. But, you know, it'll be nice to solder. 
And um, just generally, I think the layout is nice. It looks to be well done. It's clean. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm also impressed with this stabilizer. It has some sharp corners. It was clearly a water jet cut or something like that, and it does have some sharp corners. Um, but it's, again, it's stiff, which is important. It's, it's well made. I think when this stack up is put together, this board is going to feel uh, very nice. Proof will be in the pudding, but so far I am uh, impressed. I'll mention in passing that I, uh, I met, I don't know if I met Jack, the guy who, I think the guy who runs OLKB, but I met someone from OLKB at the Fort Wayne Maker Fair a couple of years ago. Then I think their first keyboard that came out was the Plank, and it's a little too small for me. It doesn't have enough keys, uh, and I wasn't that interested at the time. I thought it was a neat idea, but uh, didn't buy in. But now the Prionic has a few more keys, and um, I think is is going to work out nicely for me. So anyway, the soldering iron is heating up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch some of these uh, or touch these pins here with solder, get these soldered on, and then uh, we'll come back and play some more switches. One thing I'll mention, you can see that this is probably that this is moving and it rocks. If you rest it on, which I'm, I'm doing here, just on the switch stems, then, you know, they provide poor support for the board. So when you're soldering, you probably want to you know, push it down just a little bit uh, to get it, you know, into a solid position so that you can solder um, those points. Now, I said this wasn't going to be a tutorial, but uh, I will say I am using here uh, SN62 solder, which is 62% uh, 10, uh, 30, I think, 6% uh, lead and 2% silver. Um, and I like the solder a lot. It's nice to work with. Uh, it flows nicely. Um, it is not lead free, uh, as I guess is, is the rage these days, but as a hobbyist, it's nice to work with the leaded solder. It's, it's easier to work with and it should flow very nicely onto these gold contacts. So I'm going to go ahead and solder, uh, these switches in place and then we'll be right back. Now, one thing I'll, I'll mention there, um, the Infinity Club Ergodox was the same way. These keyboards uh, that have the solder pads that will accept any number of different switches, they get rather large. There's a lot of um, contact area there where the pins are. And so you have to be careful. You can see there how large that ring is around this pin and particularly how large this ring right here is. And so you have to be careful and make sure that you get plenty of heat on those pads uh, before you put the solder to it and that you leave the iron there a second for it to flow nicely before you lift it away. You know, leave it there for a second or two seconds to warm up, place the solder and then uh, draw it away so you get a nice clean connection. Uh, they are a little bit, they're large pads, so you'll want to have an iron with plenty of power and give it the time uh, to soak there for a second. But there we have it. We've put four the four corner uh, switches on. You can see now that this is a pretty sturdy assembly already. Uh, pretty stiff, pretty sturdy. Um, and we'll start placing some other switches. Now, I will probably just place them in rows or something like that across this and then uh, solder them in place. I won't place or maybe I will, we'll see, place all the switches uh, and then solder them, but certainly place quite a number and then solder them in place. You wanna make sure you get all of the pads when you do that, so you know don't get too far uh, ahead of yourself. So let's snap some switches in there and then uh, do some more soldering. Now when you place these switches, when you're pushing the pins or the switch into the, um, space for it on the support plate. You want to make sure that you get the pins into the holes at the same time so you don't bend those pins. Uh, if you do bend them, they can be straightened back out. They're not super flimsy, um, but they will, it will weaken them. And if you break one off, then, uh, you know, you'll be up a creek. In this case, the bag here says that there are 61 pieces in the bag and I need 60 so I could potentially damage one of them. Uh, but let's try not to do that. And I have some more uh, browns left over from my uh, input club, uh, Infinity Ergodox, but let's try not to do that. Surprisingly hard to do this around the camera. And if one's not wanting to go, just you know, flip it over, take a look at the pins, make sure that they weren't bent in uh, shipping or that you didn't bend them trying to get it into place uh, before you push it home.
Now I've caught a couple of bent pins there, so I'm just going to flip it over. Sort of make sure I have two pins on every switch that I've put through the holes so far. Looking good. I must have caught all the bent ones. Now this one, you can see here, this is where that space bar is. Uh, and we could snap this switch into either two switches or one switch in here. And this one is giving me a little bit of trouble. It went in correctly, but it was a little tough to snap in. Uh, now, if we had wanted to put a single space bar in there, we would snap one switch into the center uh, like that. But I, I don't. I want two keys. I'm actually going to have uh, on my keyboard, it will be um, space, backspace, delete, and enter. Uh, across these four keys here. And the reason for that is that that, uh, that matches the input club, uh, or I'm sorry, the ErgoDox layout that I use. Uh, it is an input club keyboard, but the ErgoDox layout. All right, the bag said 61 switches, and there were, in fact, 61 switches in there. So again, uh, take this and just check and make sure that there's two pins coming through in each position. And they're very easy to feel with your thumb. They stick out, um, I don't know, probably 16th of an inch or so. Just make sure you feel two pins on each key. All right, um, so now I will get soldering. Um, I just put, I guess, 56 keys in that keyboard, so that's 112 solder points. I'll solder those down, and then we'll be able to test. Uh, we don't have to put any keycaps or anything on there. We can test, make sure all of the switches actuate, and uh, assuming all the switches actuate, then we'll go ahead and mount it in the case and, and put some keycaps on it, and then start thinking about firmware. And remember when you're soldering to apply the solder to the joint, uh, to the, the item that you're soldering itself, not to the iron tip. Wow, this guy down here uh, with that complicated layout there, it was hard to get enough heat on there. I've got my iron set at 350 Celsius, which is uh, really pretty hot for leaded solder. Um, I don't remember what this um, particular alloy melts at. And it is eutectic, by the way, which is one of the reasons I like it. But I don't remember what temperature it melts at, but I want to say it's like 170 or 175. It was tough to get that heat into those joints. This is probably a little bit smaller tip than I should be using. I should probably have my chisel point out, but this is the one that was on the iron. All right, now let's take a good look at these solder joints, and then, uh, assuming they all look good, fire this thing up. This, this guy right here does not look very good to me. 
I'm going to hit them again. It's hard to see when I'm soldering with the uh, with the camera where it is. Those are much better now. Okay, I don't see that any, any that I missed. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, try out all the keys. Um, if you are a Linux user, there is an application called XEV, the X Event Viewer, that will show you when keys are pressed, and that will get you a key press uh, confirmation for virtually every key on a keyboard. Now on this keyboard, um, I think these keys or maybe these keys right now are set to be uh, layer changing keys that change the function of other keys but don't actually produce any key presses. So when you're testing out sort of a unique layout keyboard, you may find some keys that don't directly produce any key presses. Uh, but if you know where they should be, uh, and again, I have this, um, uh, this map that came with it, then I can check those and uh, make sure that they do modify the function of other keys. So I'm going to go ahead and go off and plug this in, uh, check all the keys. If it works, then we will put it in its case and start looking at keycaps. Okay, uh, everything checks out. Now let's look at this case again. Um, I put the case together. Uh, I put the little standoffs in here and I don't know what size these standoffs are. I suspect they're metric, maybe an M1.6. Um, they're smaller than any of the hardware that I have on hand to check. They're smaller than a number four standard uh, and they're smaller than a number three metric. I mic'd them uh, and they're something like um, 60 thousandths, I think in, um, major diameter, uh, one point, maybe eight, I forget, uh, millimeter. At, at any rate, um, I, I'm not sure, I'm not real sure what size they are, but it, they're very small. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see how, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, we'll see how it works over time. Now, as I said, I like this case. I think it's very well done. It's, it's anodized, just plain aluminum. You can get it in several colors. I got mine in just plain uh, silver, but I might've been a little bit quick to uh, to say anything about this and having FCC certification. Maybe it does, I should look. Um, but this sticker's a little dodgy. For one, it's on a little bit crooked, which I'm not real happy about, but you know that's just the uh, OCD in me. But for another, you know, this is really weird. The uh, space there between the apostrophe and the S, and the word operation uh, is misspelled conditions is misspelled. Uh, there's some kerning problems. This looks like a typical Chinese, let's make it look like the real thing uh, kind of sticker. It's it's pretty, um, pretty disappointing, uh, if you ask me. And I, I haven't looked at the FCC database to see if this keyboard is actually in there. Uh, maybe I'll be, uh, get a chance to do that before I publish this video. It would be interesting to know. But at any rate, the keyboard then sits down into the case like this. The uh, connector comes out this little port in the back. And then we'll have to thread some screws down through these holes and into the, the standoffs below. The screws go through the PC board, but then not through the support plate. The support plate is then uh, held by the keys and in turn holds uh, the keys. So uh, I'll have to do this without the camera. I'm not gonna be able to get the screws in there through those holes, but we'll just feed each of these tiny, tiny little screws down through um, the holes and get this thing mounted. All right, I'm back for just a second. These are the screws that I'm trying to put in here. You can see how tiny they are. They're ridiculously tiny and um, they're not magnetic. So uh, I had tried to get them in to feed them through. I was having some trouble with that. So I went and I said, well, I'll just take and lick my screwdriver across a rare earth magnet a few times. But, um, you know, that turned out to be useless because they're either stainless. They're probably stainless. Uh, they look too shiny to be aluminum. But uh, in any case, they're not magnetic and i um, going to have to regroup here. So here's the completed prionic. Uh, and the entire mass drop prionic drop in all of its glory. Uh, I was able to get the screws in here. It was tough, uh, but by taking the PC board and support plate out of the case 
and very carefully dropping the individual screws into their holes. Um, now they want to flip over, of course, because the, the screw has the head on the end, which is heavier. Um, and about half of them did, but then I reached down in with a bent paper clip and kind of teased them into their holes, set it down in, and was able to tighten them in. It was a pain. So, you know, Mastrop, use magnetic screws next time. That would make life easier, or uh, uh, ferromagnetic screws. Um, and I'm pretty happy. I've typed on it for about a full day now, and I'm pretty happy. I uh, wasn't sure how I would like this layout or if it would have enough keys for me. Um, I do have uh, the equals key I have up here with a on a function layer and the square brackets I have in here on a function layer and I'm a programmer so I use those keys a lot uh, and those we'll see how that works out um, in the end there's a there's a 75 key version of this keyboard um, OLKB, ma OLKB made one um, they don't make it anymore, or it hasn't been released in a long time, but there's another version out there, and it just has three more rows here on the end. And for a programmer, that might be a better uh, layout. But this should be fine for carrying around with my laptop, and of course, being smaller, it is uh, easier to carry around. Um, now, this isn't a, a super light keyboard. I would say it weighs probably a good 50% or more of what my laptop does uh, just by itself. So it's not real light. Um, I haven't weighed it. Um, if I had any nits about this build, it would be, if you see here, and I wasn't sure it would come with these, but it did, there are uh, homing keys here, which I'm a touch typist, so I do use those. I use those to place my fingers. But you can see in the camera even that they're a slightly different finish than the other keys, uh, which is a little bit disappointing, but, you know, not a huge deal. And I imagine they'll all wear in shinier um, over time. Um the other thing that I would have done differently is this is a USB mini plug and USB mini means you know carrying around get one more cable it should be micro or even USB-C uh, it shouldn't be USB mini but uh, that's what it is that said the cable that it comes with the mini cable that it comes with is a nice flexible cable that doesn't particularly hold its coil it straightens out nicely um, which is nice which will be good for using it uh, for carrying it around so there is that uh, the case is pretty nice too. It uh, has a very, very soft liner. I don't know how durable it will be, but it feels nice. And it's just the right size for the keyboard and you can slide the cable right in on top of it. And uh, no extra wasted space, but it should protect the keyboard well. Um, I should say the other nit I have, of course, is this FCC label. And I tried to look that up and it turns out that, uh, as I understand it, it changed in November of 2017, so quite recently. Um, devices no longer have to be registered with the FCC in order to claim Part 15. They don't have to submit their evidence um, a priori. They only have to be prepared to submit it if the FCC asks for it. And I did some brief searching. I didn't see this. Um, I, I, I didn't spend any time on it, though, once I saw that. Um, I don't know when this would have been um, cleared. But I am disappointed about the quality of this sticker. Um, it's a very nice build, and this sticker just makes it seem like sort of your usual cheap Chinese import stuff. Um, when it's it's not. I mean, it's nice. This case is very well done. It's very nicely made. It has soft corners. Seems to have decent anodizing. We'll see how it, wear, it holds up, but it's very um, consistent. It has these nice etchings on here uh, for the, or, or silk screenings maybe, with the mass drop and the OLKB logos. Uh, as I said, the PC board was very nice. I was very impressed, uh, and the support plate was nice. Um, it's very solid once it goes together. There are two screws on the ends here, and then two screws in a couple of rows spread out a little bit farther that hold the plate. There are no screws here in the middle, but there's no bounce, no flex whatsoever on these inner keys. Uh, it feels very nice. So um, I'll, uh, I'll use it for a while, and we'll see how that turns out. But uh, so far, I'm impressed. I like it. I used it for about um, five hours yesterday uh, working and I was pretty pleased uh, with the results. I'm, I'm, I'm happy so far. So my uh, verdict is, camera keeps going out of focus, so I move my hand there. My verdict is that uh, this is a, a nice keyboard, a nice kit, easy to build, uh, except for the, the screw, getting the screws in was a little bit of a pain, but you know, honestly, not a huge deal. 
um, and pretty high quality. Um, I'll maybe revisit this later or, or perhaps throw something up on my blog. I will link uh, down below um, the review blog post that I have for the Infinity Ergo Docs, uh, which is more comfortable for me. It's still more comfortable for me. Over time, we'll see how this wears in um, comfort-wise getting used to it and such, but of course the ErgoDox allows me to straighten my wrists and hold them like this, which, which is a big help, and, and this won't because it's uh, not a split keyboard. But I didn't expect that. It's, it's a portable keyboard. So um, I will link the ErgoDox reviews below, and maybe I'll follow up later on the blog uh, with my feelings of, for this once I've had uh, time to use it for a while. So I know this was a little bit of a different video, but hopefully some of you at least uh, found it enjoyable or uh, have some interest in nice mechanical keyboards. And um, I'll catch you next time, probably with some more uh, vintage uh, radio or teletype equipment. Thanks for watching.